Okay, this week we are going to talk about multiple regression, uh, so it kind of expanding on simple linear regression. What do we mean by multiple? Here we are talking about putting in more than one x, so we have more than one independent variable. In this general equation, what we see is that there are n x's, all right? So we have this general equation, and what we want to make sure we can do is interpret the a as well as the different b's. All right, so A is the y-intercept, just like it was in simple linear regression, which is the value of y when all the x's equal zero. So again, if we zero out all the x's, we get A, which is the y-intercept. And then considering the b's, we will look at B1. So B1 is the slope on x1. It's the amount by which y changes when x1 increases by one, with values of all other x's held constant. All right, so in other words, b is, b1 is simply the slope on x1. All right, so we interpret it that way. But the question is, well, what do we do with x2 through xn? And the answer is we hold them constant, OK? All right, there are some assumptions that go into multiple regression. I just want you guys to be aware of these. All right, so first, that there is a linear relationship between y, the dependent variable, and the set of independent variables. All right, so we're assuming that there are linear relationships here. All right, the variation in the residuals is the same for both large and small predicted values. Now, what that really means is that we know that the data varies around the regression equation, right? So what we're saying here is that the variation around the regression equation is the same roughly for all values of the independent variables. All right, and these residuals, all right, so the distance between the observation and the re regression line, the residuals follow a normal distribution. This one is pretty important. Uh, their independent variables are not correlated. If they are correlated, you get something called multicollinearity, which is bad in terms of a multiple regression equation. So we don't want our x's to correlate. All right, and then the residuals are independent. All right, so the residuals are not dependent on one another. All right, so the rest of the way here, we're going to go through a mini tab example. All right. And in the data file, in the Minitab file, we have a sample of 20 homes. We would like to investigate which factors significantly predict the heating cost in the month of January at the 5% significance level. All right, so looking at our data file, what are going to be the independent variables? Because we know Y is the heating cost. That's what we want to predict. All right, so what are the independent variables? All right, we've got mean outside daily temperature, number of inch, inches of insulation in the attic, age in years of the furnace, and whether or not the home has a garage. All right, now when we're looking at the data, we notice that the garage column looks different than the other columns, right? In the garage column, we only see zeros and ones. All right, so we need to talk about how to handle this. All right, so we need to talk about categorical variables. All right, categorical variables or qualitative variables means it does not represent numerical data. All right, what does that zero stand for? What does that one stand for? All right, so whether or not a house has a garage is qualitative. All right, it's coded as zero for no garage and one for garage. These are often called dummy variables uh, in statistical uh, textbooks and such. And you need to pay close attention to the data to determine if you have a categorical or zero one variable. All right. I'm not going to tell you in the problem that you do have that such and such is a categorical variable. This is something you're going to have to look for. All right. Um, let's go through some methods for solving in Minitab. All right, um, first is something called a stepwise regression. All right, so what do we mean by this? 
it begins with a single independent variable. So we put one X into the model. If the p-value is less than 5%, we leave it in the model. If the p-value is larger than 5%, we remove it. And then we add another independent variable. And we add these independent variables one at a time. Either it stays in the model, meaning the p-value is less than 5%, or we remove it, meaning the p-value is greater than 5%. All right. Let's talk a little bit more about backward regression because this is the method that we are going to use in this course. I think it is a little bit easier and more intuitive. All right, so how does backward regression differ? Well, in this method, it begins with the entire set of independent variables in the model. So in other words, put in all of your X's. All right, and then you are going to remove an independent variable one at a time. All right, you're going, which one do you choose? You choose the one with the largest p-value over 5%. All right, you are going to continue until all the remaining independent variables are significant. I keep saying you're going to do this, but really we know Minitab is going to do this. All right, running the analysis in Minitab. All right, we are going to go to regression, multiple regression. All right, so let's split our screen here. All right, so here is Minitab. We are going to go to Regression, Multiple Regression. All right, as we see here in PowerPoint, our response is cost. That's our Y. Our continuous predictors, meaning our quantitative data, is temperature insulation, and age. Our categorical predictor is garage. We keep fit intercept always checked. All right, and then we're going to go under stepwise. We are going to select backward elimination. And we will always set our alpha to 0.05. And we say OK. All right, so here are our results. All right, I think I'm going to keep the screen split here so that you can kind of follow along. All right, interpreting the output. All right, first, let's look at the model selection details. So we're going to look right here at the model selection details. Notice the model ran with two iterations. So we have step one and step two. In the first iteration, we have all of our X's. We have temperature, insulation, age, and garage. Notice that looking at these p-values, all right, in the second column here, age had a p-value of 0.2707. That is the largest insignificant p-value. So in step two, notice that age is removed. All right, in this second iteration, Temperature, insulation, and garage all have significant p-values, meaning less than 5%. All right, we want to be able to write the equation. All right, so this up here, the regression equation, you say, well, Angie, I'm just going to copy this down. No, we don't want to do that. All right, we don't want to write it as a piecewise equation or two equations. All right, I don't like how many tab does that. We want to write it as a single equation. So we're going to stay looking at model selection details, and we are going to use the coefficients under step two to write our equation. All right, so we start with y equals our constant. So we have 393.67 minus 3.9628 times temperature. That's our x minus 11.334 times insulation. Oops, where did I put that? Well, I'm not going to be able to change it. Times insulation plus 77.43 times garage. All right, and that would be our final regression equation. 
All right, let's go through interpreting the p-values. First, let's look in the analysis of variance table. All right, so hold on one second while I just scroll down to the analysis of variance table. All right, so we see a p-value here. The question is, what does this p-value represent? All right, this p-value is for a global test. It says, because it is significant, that the set of independent variables, all right, so the three remaining in the model, all right, temperature, insulation, and garage, effectively estimate home heating costs as a set, okay? So those three belong in the model. All right, now let's go back to model selection details and now interpret these three p-values. These p-values say whether or not the specific independent variable belongs in the model. All right, so temperature at 0 0.000, all right, this p-value says temperature belongs in the model. This 0 0.0120 says insulation belongs in the model. And this 0 0.0037 says garage belongs in the model. I don't know why I said age. We'll change that one right now. Insulation. All right. So one more thing. I just want you to notice that if we scroll down to the coefficients table, we see these p-values again. All right, we also see our final coefficients again. All right, so again, this table right here that, we, that I have highlighted in blue is repeating the numbers we see here under step two. All right, and then lastly, we want to interpret the model summary. All right, so let's go down to our model summary. All right, so here is our model summary. All right, we are certainly used to interpreting the coefficient of determination, or R squared. This gives us the percent of variation in the dependent variable Y explained by the set of X's, okay? But we have a problem. It will continue to increase as more X's, or independent variables, are added to the model it does not necessarily say the added independent variable is a good predictor of the dependent variable. How do we get around this? And the answer is, for multiple regression, we want to interpret the adjusted coefficient of determination, or R squared adjust. All right, so this last number here. It is adjusted for the number of x's that we have in our final equation and it's more accurate to use for the explained percent of total variation accounted for by the regression equation. All right, so what would be an interpretation, all right, of our coefficient of determination? The answer is 84.54% of the total variation in heating costs is explained by mean daily temperature, amount of insulation, and presence of a garage.